Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with yet another in-depth, unbiased gear review. And today I am in chilly but beautiful Hood River, Oregon. I've escaped the winter back at home. It's cold, but it's not too cold to test a kayak. And the kayak I'm testing is this sucker right here. This is the NRS Pike Inflatable Fishing Kayak. Now, inflatable kayak and fishing kayak are two terms that a lot of people think those don't go together. I mean, when you're, you've got hooks and knives even on your boat, why would you do it in an inflatable kayak? Well, the reality is that a quality inflatable kayak can be a great fishing or kayak fishing platform. And that is what NRS believes they've created with the Pike. And so I'm going to get this thing set up. I'm going to tell you a bit more about it. And then I am going to brave the cold and give it a good test on the Columbia River. Let's do it. The adventure. I like it. The NRS Pike Inflatable Kayak has a retail price of $1,400. It's 12 feet 8 inches long, 38 inches wide, it weighs 48 pounds, and it has a capacity of 375 pounds. Its primary use is kayak fishing and recreational paddling. Well, that was very easy to assemble. There's three chambers here. You've got the two side tubes, which uh, you only pump up to three PSI, which is actually, when I say only, that's good for a non-drop stitch tube. It's, it's plenty hard. It doesn't feel flimsy at all. The bottom though, the floor of this thing, it's drop stitch. So you pump the floor up to eight PSI, which is nice and rigid. And that's gonna make this thing perform more like a hard shell kayak. It's just gonna give this, it's not gonna, this thing isn't gonna feel flimsy. What I liked about assembling this thing was the pump it came with. It's the Super 2 pump or something. I haven't tried that pump from NRS before and it's got two switches on it. It's got a, uh, a mode where you're just filling lots of air into it. But once it gets tight, you flip the switch and it's their pressure booster. And then all of a sudden it's easy to pump and to, to get it to that higher pressure. It really took some of the strain off of inflating inflatable kayak. Cause I'm, you know, I still, don't get me wrong. I am a, an advocate for uh, electric pumps when you have the opportunity to use them. If you're gonna have an inflatable kayak and use it a lot, an electric pump, and there's some cool actually battery operated ones right now where you don't have to be plugged into a vehicle. You can be where I am and, and just pump this thing up in no time. Uh, they're really nice to have, but that, it's a, I think it's called the Super 2 pump. It was, it was really nice, it inflated this thing quick. But anyway, let's talk about, let's get right into it. Let's talk about some of the features of this kayak. The NRS Pike features a protective EVA foam deck pad, a rigid bow keel, adjustable foot pegs, a framed seat, daisy chain rigging on the bow and stern, a fish measuring board, a removable fin, and it comes with a pump, a carry bag, and a repair kit. It also has a three-year warranty. All right, well, I do like the looks of this boat and I see, I find myself saying that more and more with inflatable kayaks, but you would not have heard me say that a couple of years ago. And you know, that's, that's because I've really developed an appreciation for portable kayaks, inflatable kayaks over the past couple of years. You know, before that I was, I really liked high performance kayaks and that was it. But that was partly because a lot of the inflatable kayaks not too long ago were very simple and you had to, you gave up a lot of performance for the portability but uh, they've evolved a, a great deal over the past five years or so maybe maybe more and and now you don't have to give up as much performance and as many features 
with an inflatable kayak. And so uh, that's very much the case here with the, the Pike is it's got lots of features. Um, now, a lot of the features it has, well, not a lot, some of the features, in particular the Yak Attack uh, accessory mounts that it has, it's got five of them, they really are features that relate to kayak fishing. They call this a fishing kayak, but the only thing that really differentiates this kayak from a recreational kayak are these Yak Attack accessory mounts and maybe the fish measuring board in the center of this thing. And that's because recreational kayaks and fishing kayaks, they really are very similar. Generally speaking, the big difference is that fishing kayaks have more fishing features, fishing accessories. And, and that's why this kayak, this is the Pike, but you can get the Pike Pro uh, model, which comes with a paddle and it comes with, with actual five Yak Attack accessories to, to work with these mounts, including the Yak Attack Black Pack, uh, the Omega Rod Holder. I can't remember all the different accessories that come with it, but that quickly turns this fishing ready recreational kayak into a kayak fishing machine. But bottom line is they call this thing a fishing kayak. Is it for just kayak anglers? No, this is great for kayak anglers. Oh, we'll see if it's great and that's what I'm going to test. But uh, it's for kayak anglers, but it's also for recreational paddlers who may or may not want to fish from their kayak. Uh, so now it's time though to find out how well it performs. And so to do that on this cold but fine day, I'm going to be putting on a dry suit. And so that's what I'm going to do and get this thing on the water. Well, it turned out to be a pretty beautiful day for chilly but beautiful for testing a kayak. And uh, with the conditions here in Hood River too, this nice calm pond and then the Columbia River itself, which always nearly seems to have some wind chop and uh, some more aggressive conditions. It was a great, great opportunity to test the, the pike. Here is what I can tell you. And let's start kind of like I always do with portability. So the Pike is 48 pounds. It's what's that, 22 kilos or something like that. That's not heavy, it's not light. It's kind of what you expect for a 12 and a half foot, in, I would expect for 12 and a half foot inflatable kayak. A hard shell kayak that's of similar size you know, 12 and a half foot fishing kayaks, hard shell kayaks can, can be as much as 100, 110 pounds. So 48 pounds is not a lot. There are lighter kayaks. It's enough though, where the pack is, you know, it's enough. It's, a, it's, it's substantial, but still very portable. In terms of assembly, I already mentioned this at the beginning when I put this thing together, it was very fast to pump up. Uh, even with the drop stitch floor, which you can pump right up to eight PSI, it was quick because of the dual action or the, what do they call it? The, I've forgotten the name of it, but the, the pump that comes with this thing has two stages, one to fill it up quick, but then one to top it up and really boost the pressure. And it, it made it very easy to pump this thing. So high marks for portability for this boat. Now let's talk about its uh, comfort. Now, the whole idea of a framed seat, elevated seat in an inflatable kayak. 
<laughs> I love it. I love the frame seats. They conform to almost any butt shape. It's nice and wide, so I don't have the smallest of butts, but there's you could have a bigger butt than I do and still be comfortable in this thing. Great lower back support in this thing. Uh, the fact that you're sitting off the ground is great is really nice. I'm in a dry suit, so it wouldn't really matter. Uh, I I wouldn't get wet butt anyway, but the rest of the year when you would get a wet butt, I'm sitting off the ground. I'm not getting a wet butt. The foot pegs on this thing. I, if you've watched any of my reviews, you'll know I love foot pegs. And the fact that these things, this boat has not only foot pegs, but nice big foot pegs. So the ball of my feet is actually on the foot peg. A lot of the times, especially in portable kayaks, they have foot pegs. The foot pegs are very low. And so you just, they're almost at the bottom of your foot. And it's not, it's better. It's definitely better support, but it's not nearly as good support as most hard shell kayaks. These foot pegs give you support where you need them. They install super easy. Again, I'm mentioning that in this comfort segment because foot pegs do play a big role with comfort. They, they support your legs. Uh, so your legs don't want to drop right down. And when you're paddling, you're getting to push off something. So, not only they, do they enhance your performance, your paddling power, but they are uh, a factor in comfort. Stability. Well, you know, rock solid. I, could, I don't think you could actually flip this kayak because when you're sitting high like this, I mean, I was really pushing it out to the side to see how far I could, uh, I could push it. And I wasn't going to flip this kayak. I was going to fall out of the kayak before I flipped this kayak. That's how stable it is. Standing up in it was a breeze. Uh, with the big, this big stadium seat, when, what I, if I was setting this up to stand up and fish out of it, I would actually move the seat back a little bit because when I stood up, I was a little on the front side of this boat. I wasn't as centered as I wanted to be. Um, but small little point. Stability, top marks for that. Now let's talk performance. Inflatable kayaks and performance, they don't typically go together. <laughs> they're, they're very uh, contradictory. So is that the case with this boat? Well, yes and no. You know, it actually performed just as I expected it to be, as it expected it to. Now, with that said, I did have fairly high expectations for it because of the hard bow keel at the front. The problem with most inflatable kayaks is that they're just flat bottoms and and the flat bottoms at the front too and so they don't perform like hard shell kayaks because that flat bottom isn't tracking isn't cutting a path through the water and when a boat is traveling through the water and cutting a path through the water it the bow is being held in place when you don't have that you just have a flat surface there then that bow is free to move back and forth with every stroke you take and so that's why inflatable kayaks have have um, fins in them but sometimes they even have two fins one more in the center of the border up front uh, to help it go straight because the bow isn't doing the work well they put this hard hard nose keel on this boat to help the bow you know cut through the water and hold it in place does it work yes absolutely does it work as well as a hard shell kayak no it doesn't hold the boat the, the bow as well it doesn't track as well as a 12 foot hard shell kayak there's no doubt about that but it's a significant step up from a a typical inflatable kayak that doesn't have that so uh it works the bow keel definitely works the other thing about this boat, not a lot of rocker. It's quite flat and I really noticed that when I was in the waves, waves would be breaking over the bow very easily because it's not designed really for, for those types of conditions. It's designed for calmer conditions, but that lack of rocker is what allows it to track better and to travel forward more efficiently than a lot of inflatable kayaks that are more banana shaped. So all in all, for what it is, it's a, a solid performing 12 foot kayak. Does it perform like a, uh, a 12, most 12 foot hard shell kayaks? No, but it performs well for an inflatable cut for what it is. I, I can't complain. Now the features on the Pike. Well, there's not too many features, but there are some features to talk about. 
the daisy chain system up here that allows you to customize the the uh, the tie downs and add stuff to this boat it is just a nice feature for customization it's a simple feature that they've added but it's a nice feature these the yak attack accessory mounts that is a very nice feature and what I like about them is they put them in an intelligent spot intelligent spots around the boat there's five of them two here one in the middle in front of me and two behind me uh, none of them are in the way of paddling and that's important because it's a paddle boat this isn't a pedal boat so if that if I attach a fish finder if I attach a rod holder there and it's in the way of my stroke then it's useless it's absolutely useless and I don't know how many boats I've tried that put a fish or a mount in a place where it's not usable so they've put it in the right place it's just forward of my stroke and I have a long I have long arms so that's a good thing that center mount it's great too it's not out of the way of your feet but not out of the way of the front storage area that's the right spot for that same thing with the, the mounts back here so love that feature the uh, EVA pads here uh, standing up I wasn't slipping around at all and that you know that's part of the purpose of this the other purpose is uh, protection this is designed for fishing and you know maybe we'll just get right into that and the talk about the value the overall value now this is a $1,400 kayak that's not a cheap kayak that's not an expensive kayak either fishing kayaks you typically expect to pay between as little as ah, maybe seven hundred eight hundred dollars but up to five thousand dollars so fourteen hundred dollars isn't the entry level but it's not the extreme level for a portable fishing kayak I feel like the price is pretty much bang on it's not like this wow unbelievable deal drop everything and go get it it's exactly in my mind what you should be paying for a kayak of this nature it is made really well this is a kayak that I mean NRS makes whitewater rafts they've been making this, this stuff forever and if it can handle getting dragged across rocks going down a river at, at real high speeds it can handle fish hooks and spiny parts of, uh, of fish and you know it can handle almost anything you can throw at it yes you have to be a little careful a little more careful on an inflatable than in a hard shell but I would have total confidence uh, fishing in this thing because I know that they built it really well and that's part of the reason why it's also a little a little on the heavy side maybe at 48 pounds um, you know for an inflatable it's because it's it's built tough it's built durable any kayak with a drop stitch floor which provides stiffness when you're paddling and I really noticed it when I was paddling in the waves and you know slapping on the waves the boat wasn't being the amoeba <laughs> through the waves it was slapping like a, a stiff kayak should any kayak that has that you're gonna pay a premium for drop stitch floor and the frame seat again that's a premium thing uh, a premium kayak feature there, everything on this kayak is for an inflatable kayak is pretty much a premium feature even these mounts are premium features so yeah you're paying extra for those things but you're getting something for the money so value absolutely very solid value um, who's it for it's for kayak anglers 100% if you're a hardcore kayak angler you can either get the pro package or cut kit it out yourself the joy of these yak attack mounts is they can be used for almost well, for any fishing accessory uh, but this isn't just a kayak anglers boat this is a paddlers boat someone who really is going to be sticking to calm calm water it's not designed for the water that I was in what I noticed very quick paddling in the waves out there is that this is what we call sometimes a bucket boat it's not a self bailing boat so any water that comes into this thing stays in this boat a lot of sit on tops it'll drain out it'll have holes on the inside where that water drains out that doesn't happen in this which means it's designed for calm water because it will eventually I mean unlike a sit inside hard shell cock which will actually swamp and you 
really can't you you have to get out of it and <laughs> swim to shore this has got so much air it will never fully swamp even if it filled right up with water but it sure is hard to paddle when it's that full of water so not designed for the rough stuff designed for calm water any kayak angler or recreational paddler who wants a calm water boat inflatable that's going to track well it's ford inflatable it's going to you can paddle a distance in this thing it's going to you want it you're willing to pay a little premium for something that's going to last this thing is durable and that's why it has a three-year warranty so that's probably all i have to say about this boat two thumbs up um a quick people have asked me in the past about the other gear gear i've been using so let me talk about it real quick let you know what i'm using on this cold spring day i'm using a paddle i've never tried before this is the the werna shuna hooked paddle it's a kayak fishing paddle really it's just a normal paddle with a cool bass pattern on it <laughs> but uh what's nice about this thing it's got fiberglass blades you know stiff light relatively speaking a carbon shaft this is a 240 to 260 it's a telescoping paddle so it, it it's a nice um, you know gives you flexibility and also you can use any twist i was using zero degree degree twist i was also using it at uh, 240 centimeters which was perfect for me in this kayak May, you know what actually could have probably extended it to 245 and that would have been fine for me but that's a great length for a boat of this nature that's fairly wide and you're sitting high 240 to 250 centimeters anyway nice paddle it's the first time i've used this thing and, and i'm not surprised because you know uh werner makes nice paddles i'm wearing uh the nrs boundary boots they come up to almost atop my calves or atop my calves and they're over top the socks of this dry suit i think this is the new the gore-tex pro axiom dry suit i should know that I've tried many dry suits, so I'm starting to, to forget which is which. But this is the new one from NRS that's Gore-Tex. You pay a pretty penny for the Gore-Tex. They have one that's significantly cheaper that's not Gore-Tex, but still waterproof, breathable. Um, you pay, pay, pay a pretty penny for the Gore-Tex, but I mean, I am both. I just stepped, I'm wearing, truth be told, I'm not doing things the way I should. I just stepped from my clo street clothes right in here. I'm wearing jeans. I'm wearing my dress shirt. The joy of a really nice dry suit. Nice thing about boundary boots is when I'm walking through the water to drag it to the main river, you just don't have to, my feet are bone dry. I love these boots. I've been on so many big expeditions, big trips with these boots and I'll never give them up. And then I have these uh, Hydra Skin gloves just to take the chill off. They're really thin, they still give good contact. I'm not a huge glove guy because I don't I like having my hand right on the the paddle itself you do lose grip you do lose comfort but for this type of relaxed paddling it didn't doesn't really matter to me I'd rather have warm hands than than great the best grip possible so there you go that's the gear that I'm using uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and well you know what this is the spring spring 2023 the beginning of a lot more videos a lot more gear reviews so stay tuned for those tips and some paddling adventures coming up so subscribe if you haven't already uh, leave a comment down below if you have experience in this thing share your thoughts with with everybody else you've got my opinion on this boat from a well maybe an hour long paddle but if you've been spending more time in this boat and have more insights please share them and we'll see you again for more paddling stuff